Ma, what I like about your story is that you started from nothing uh, because you you said in, a, in an interview that you were broke. Um, explain <laughs> explain that that sort of that beginning and why do you think why did you think you picked chef? Okay, well, um, growing up, I was never really into academics at all. I was also the troublemaker in school. I never wanted to study. I I was forever looking for the fun thing. And initially, I thought it would be arts, but then I realized that art is really difficult, and again, something that really needed my kind of uh, attention. But um, as I was growing up, I actually come from a family of big eaters, and you know, we've always really enjoyed food. Yeah. Uh, my father. Uh, would take us to all these places you know like these unknown kind of places so really early on i just feel like all of us in my family actually we had we were inclined towards food a lot more than your average family like i'd go to my friends homes and you know there were, it would never be a thing eating was never a thing but in my house it was always a thing this is in karachi this is in karachi i've spent some time in turkey but for the most part i have been brought up and raised over here so um i think after my o levels it was true that we i i just i realized one day that i really wanted to cook and i used to watch bbc food with my sister like morning to night especially in ramzan we'd be fasting and we torture ourselves by just watching bbc food all day and then one day i realized that you know this is something that i could potentially do mm. uh however culinary school and culinary degrees are super duper expensive yeah. and to yeah. convince my family at a time where they already didn't have the kind of money and to also suggest a profession which was really nothing like uh, it's only now that i feel that the younger generation is getting into food and it's become like a viable career option but mm. it back then and i'm talking like well be like before 2010 even so that's just easily a decade gone so no one was really pushed or inclined or motivated to spend that kind of money for me and uh, so i just had to do it myself i got a scholarship and i went to cordon bleu and i Which got one? Uh, in, london. in london and i was really lucky because uh, i didn't have to pay anything all i had yeah. to pay for was like a knife set and uh, i stayed with a friend so that was also taken care of and uh, yeah and then i went to uh, culinary school and uh, after culinary school i went to turkey i and, know yeah but do you still have the knife set i still have that knife set you yeah do? and i don't let anyone use it really? so it's just sitting there as do like you use a, it though? yeah uh, no i don't it's so <laughs> weird i just don't use it yeah i know it's just <laughs> like sitting safely somewhere serving no purpose uh, but yeah it's just there It is, do you still keep in touch with some of the your sort of your fellow students from For sure Cordon yeah Blue? yeah uh, in fact one of my uh, really good friends uh, he's from Spain and him and I more than anyone always make it a point because when I travel I always make it a point to go see him and there's always some kind of cooking involved or some like trying out of new restaurants and such so yeah I am in touch with people So then you went to Turkey but you again why did you why could you not have come back to Pakistan you say no I'm going to go somewhere else and okay. gain some work So experience. again uh coming back to what I spoke about earlier I uh, there was nothing in terms of like a food career Yes a concept kab kab ki baat kar rahe the 7 this is two, I was done with culinary school by 2010 Okay 10 okay. and there was nothing as in in terms of getting a job and uh, I knew that I wanted to learn more and you know learning at a school and learning act on an actual kind of job I feel are two very different things mm. so even today when someone asks me if they should go to culinary school I'm like well if you can afford it you should go but I would if I did it all over again uh I would much rather spend more time in a restaurant kitchen than I would at culinary school because you know it's just like you need real life experience I agree So uh yeah so I went to Turkey I have a bit of a link with Turkey so it was a bit easier for me right. uh and yeah I trained over there for about 6 about 7 odd months and uh, So wait was it pastry chef that was No 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 it was, was it food okay. I actually didn't like pastry and growing up all my life I'd be like you know always in like a friends group there's always this one girl who's a good baker who will make brownies and such I was never that girl <laughs> I was never that girl Well which girl were you then which which I one? was just the one who always got the food 
you know and like you know lots of food and you know everyone would gather around and i was always a food provider desi no not desi as such but i love desi food but uh, no not desi do you remember the first party you catered for what, what was it you made yes i do actually the first one which was an accidental gig mm. so i had just returned from turkey mm. and i was at, i was somewhere and i met this friend's friend and she had told me that it, and i was talking to her about my like the fact that i was thinking of starting like a home based catering business and uh, it was thinking i had no plans of actually doing it but you know when you meet someone they're like acha yeah. you know you've just returned and what are your plans now? i was like oh you know i just threw out like this thing i'm like oh i'm going to start like a catering business and she's like okay well why don't you give me your number and uh, it's my brother in law's <coughs> birthday or something so why don't you make food for it and i was like okay and i never thought that she would call because you know you have like a bunch wow. of these conversations with people yeah, right yeah. and uh, she did call and i'm like oh oh so my only like purchase and i'm so like i i still remember uh, while starting uh, fat sauce was just an oven uh-huh. because i was like you know <coughs> home kitchen mein chula shula all these things are fine but what you really need to make like you know slightly fancier food is an oven So I remember I spent thirty thousand bucks, the only thirty thousand bucks I had at that time, and I just went and got myself an oven and I made this menu and I catered for this dinner party of thirty-five people alone. I had no help, and I was dead by the end of it because I didn't realize, you know, like your timelines are all off. You don't understand, and also the fear of someone actually paying for your food. Mm. So that was a big thing, and I remember it being really tough. But once the food was out, and you know, I got like a bunch of really good reviews. I was like, "Wow, you know, I could potentially do this," and that's how it just started. And we've just started. What we're going to do is go to a track and then a break. Maha Javed, owner of Easy Bite Fair. So thank you for the donuts, by the way. You're welcome. When I opened them this morning, the entire studio filled with this aroma. This smell. <laughs> like nice. I couldn't concentrate on the show. Uh, we'll be back straight after this. Just very quickly, I'm, I'm just going off on a tangent here. Um, I, I've, I've seen and I've, I've been told that Turks are very passionate about their food. Uh, you know, we often talk about. um salt pay whatever but i i i read a story once about the person that who is his ustad yeah and the butcher who was you know humble means etc but would talk to his meat would uh oh, really? yeah would talk to his meat <laughs> and would um would, would come in the morning and say good morning and would sort of pat the meat as if it was wow. pa- like this was the, and I was like, talk about passion yeah I mean, even i don't have that kind of passion <laughs> you don't talk to donuts i don't talk morning. to my donuts <laughs> <laughs> but so you you've come back to pakistan and you've started this home catering business and then um you could have gone into a restaurant into the restaurant business couldn't you at that if point if i really tried i could have found some link and i could have done something but right. i wasn't really yeah motivated to work for someone so else. was there a block like was there a, like a, a mental sort of block no no i maybe i don't have the skills or maybe i just don't have what it takes what was it i think for me i mean without sounding arrogant or cocky but i really did feel that the food that i had learned and the kind of knowledge that i had gained in however many years of practicing food at home and at culinary school at in turkey etc i just felt that there was no real restaurant at that time apart from okra uh where i could actually be of some use because you know it's also very important it was it was and it still is very important for me to be inspired by where or who i'm working with yeah. and at that time it was only okra and you know okra was a pretty small restaurant back then and i al- and also the thing is that food salaries like the profession itself the salaries are very low mm. so you know like they're so i was just like you know what do i do do i go and work like morning to night for a very small salary or should i try and do something myself and it was a pretty easy answer especially since that accidental catering i ended up doing yeah. it just made more sense for me to do it myself and then to see if i wanted to work uh for someone else but that never really happened and then you started uh providing to other restaurants and cafes yeah so my real big like you know like something that kind of put fat sauce on the map essentially was that by that point i had suddenly learned to be a baker and i just knew how to make Funny one that. cake yeah one cake 
That was the only cake I knew. And it was a red velvet cake. And I went and I met the owner of Espresso. And I was like, listen, I think you guys have really good desserts. And I think you're a pretty good cafe. <coughs> and I think that you should put my cake on your menu. It was a very like random meeting. And we did. And that was insane because I was still going really slowly before then. Like, you know, I'd get like one catering gig in 10 days. Mm. And suddenly, and you know, Espresso was a known brand by then. And the cake became such a big hit over there that they're like, okay, like the guy would call me and he'd be like, Aap hume che cake bhe de. And I'd be like, but my oven's really small. I can't even fit two cakes in it. <laughs> like, how do I do this? And that's when the whole thing started. And literally before we knew it, like me and that, then I hired a helper. And him and I were making like over 500, 800, 900 cakes a month. Wow. And that's when I realized that, okay, this is now, I'm in it. And this is work now. You know, before this, those catering gigs were very chill. You know, like one gig in 10 days is nothing, really. And suddenly you're like, no, this is my job. I have to wake up every morning. And sometimes even like, you know, on occasions like Valentine's Day and like Eid, etc. We were pulling all-nighters, just me and my one helper. Now, I read somewhere that you you, um, are fond of kids and you, 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 you... you think about food and kids and so on. So was donuts sort of that direction? Mm. Is there a link there or is it, is it completely? Uh, not at all, actually. Uh, I just wanted to make donuts because I've never been a big fan of cakes as, as a consumer myself. I've never really gone someplace and bought myself a slice of cake or a tart or like it's just never been a thing but the one thing that I've always really liked were donuts Mm. and I used to think to myself that we don't have any good donuts in town and uh, then I traveled a bit and uh, I was in New York and I went to this place called Doe and I had their donut and I was like oh my god this is incredible how is this uh, like reality like how is i mean you know because you don't have that over here so when you when you've grown up in a place where you don't eat these things and you suddenly eat something you're just like oh my god so new york really changed it for me and i was like i must make donuts like these and then oddly enough and this is the most bizarre thing i was in dublin and there was some donut revolution going on over there, which is so crazy because you one would just not associate the donuts in Dublin, right? And there were like donut shops every two blocks. And over there, I had a donut which was even better than New York. And I'm like, this is a sign. I need to make Unka donuts. Local yeah, it was local. It was all local. There were no chains. Right. No franchises, no Krispy Kreme, nothing. Mm. This was local, homemade. There were sourdough donuts, there were brioche donuts. And that's when I was like, I need to go back to Pakistan and I need to make the most amazing donut ever. And then it took me a year yeah. of constant trying. You take your time. Yeah, yeah, I really do. <laughs> I really, really do. Is that with everything in life? Everything. Everything. Of course, I, I do make some impulsive decisions, but when it comes to work, especially, and especially to when it comes to food, you know, even even my style of searching recipes online has never been... I will never go and follow a recipe which is quick and easy something. Like, I've always chosen recipes that take their time. Yeah. And that's just how it is. And even our donuts take a lot of time. They're beautiful, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, not only did you pick the toughest business to be in, you also picked the, probably the toughest thing to master yeah food to master yeah took you over a year was there a point where you said no I, I'm, I'm 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 going a different direction so many really? not tr- not with food but while i was making donuts i made donuts for a year literally four times a week and the amount of batches i wasted and you know and when we did finally realize me and my business partner that i was going to do donuts initially the plan was to only do donuts and fried chicken right this was easy's concept right so this is what, you know, uh, when, even when I was doing my brand ID, etc. So the focus was always on donuts and fried chicken. Mm. And I realized that, okay, that's a bit silly and not possible. You need more food on your menu. But there were so many times when I was like, I can't do it. And I was like, I don't want to do this because I wanted a specific kind of donut and just wasn't happening. Mm. And I wouldn't understand because what also needs to happen as a baker is that you need to keep changing with the temperature of where you're living, right? Mm. So you go, so Karachi has mildly, you know, cold winter, then the summer is really intense. This is all yeast-based, the temperature of the dough, etc. So there were so many changes 
that it really drove me crazy and even after we opened easy <coughs> even after the recipe was finalized we opened in the dead of summer like mm. intense july garmi and suddenly it was cool and we're like oh no the donuts aren't coming out right <laughs> because it became cool now and we were used to really high you know low hydration mm-hmm. because it was mm-hmm. hot so then we had to bring our hydration down change the formula all over again oh so currently the donut recipe changes thrice a year based on the season and based on the temperature well, i never i, I know ne- it's fascinating never, right it's also yeah it is crazy but it is like i'm 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 fascinated by the process of baking and dough and bread and it is crazy wow. yeah but what what in those days where you thought you know this is just this is the ma what have you got yourself into what was it that sort of kept you from uh changing course was there was there a thought was there a, an attitude what was it for me i've always known that i want to do food yeah and i've also been the sort that and this is mainly with work otherwise i can be a bit of a quitter and you know i can get bored easily but with food i always knew that i just wanted to do food in any format in any version food has always been a thing for me i was always going to do it professionally so while i was working on the donor side like ye to ab karna hai mm. so there would be many days when i'd just be sitting with my business partner and i'd be like i'm done and i can't deal with this anymore and you know like ye kya azab le liya hai type but uh, ultimately i knew that i was going to do it and then easy opened and the first three months were nothing short of hell no. it was actual heavy duty hell and there were days when i i, I was working i kid you not 14 to 16 hours a day and by the time i'd get home i'd be so wired and you know so tired with work that i couldn't even sleep but then there'd be some disaster taking place in terms of operations at easy so i'd then get to work at like 7 in the morning so the first 3 or maybe even 4 months were really really tough and tough enough to break anyone and i personally consider myself a pretty strong individual in the sense that my resolve is strong and i i do like take the hard away but I, there were many moments where i was like what have i gotten myself into yeah. you know aram se main baithi bhi thi i was doing my catering i was designing <laughs> menus for restaurants paise bhi theek the and you know this is just like main travel bhi kar rahi thi this yeah exactly <laughs> so this is just hell that i've taken on but uh, you just keep going like yeah. uh, it was also the the only another thing which i must add though is that what also made it a bit bearable and easier was the fact that it was genuinely being loved by everyone yeah. you know i see a lot of restaurants who go through the same kind of operational okay. hell but they're not getting the customers and they're not making the money so no matter how tired i would get i would sit with my friends or sit with my business partner and i'd be like you know we could be going through all of this and not making any money mm. so there is a silver lining there was a right. silver lining even then and right. you just need to be grateful ki theek hai intense hai but you know at least people love it like we would have literally like lines of 100 people outside easy and you've seen how small easy is yeah yeah i go there with my kids often so yeah <coughs> take inventory and uh, be grateful we're going to go to break coming up next if, coming up next we're going to get some advice from my if you're thinking of getting into business um and if you a if you are a sole proprietor and you think you know I want to get into this business what do I do advice coming up next and if you have a question 0315 or 021-3452-1596. uh 1038 mayor morris and gray with the middle mahajave the owner of um, easy by fat sauce now You know, you were saying that there's restaurants opening up by you know every day or every yeah. week. There's just restaurants. There's one restaurant you hear. There's a new one here. Ab yahan par bhi khul gaya, ab yahan par bhi khul gaya. Um, and what I'm seeing is there's a growing trend of home businesses, uh, people that are doing desserts or people specializing in one kind of dish, whether it's cowsway or whatever it is. Um, y- your advice to someone because I. I say this every time I hear a friend going yeah, to a restaurant. I say, do, do you know that your holidays? You don't. You don't get any holidays. There's no chhuttiyan. There's no Eid. Uh, there's just you <laughs> and the restaurant. What is your first of all? If anyone wants to get into the food business, how or where should they start? Well, I think what they need to do is that they need to get out of their homes. If if they've started, if if the platform has been uh, through their. Uh, home based business uh they need to get out of there 
uh, because you could be the most amazing home cook, but you know, trying to figure out timelines of a restaurant. Like for me, my main course needs to be out within 17 minutes of a customer being there, and the appetizers need to go out by 12 minutes. Okay. Now, now the thing is that you could make the most amazing roast leg of lamb at home, which takes 19 hours to slow cook, etc. But is that viable for a mm. restaurant? Mm. And how are you going to sell it? So this kind of timeline is taught only in an actual kitchen. So till you don't have at least minimum, minimum, minimum one year of experience in an actual fast-paced kitchen, which does at least a num, at least like 50 covers or 80 covers a night. Don't even think about opening a restaurant. But how did you get that experience? Did you just go and work for a restaurant. So or? I was creating menus and uh, designing, like training staff for a restaurant. So there would be some training over there. But honestly, the bigger chunk did happen. Like I really got uh, quite, like, it was hard for me to understand what the timelines were like. Thankfully, I had been in and out of so many restaurant kitchens in the last few years that it wasn't as hard. Like that wasn't our big issue. Mm. Our big issue was the operational kind of thing, which mm. I had zero experience of. So that is where. So, so again, you either get like a bunch of partners, mm. uh, you know, where everyone has a role, and you know, somebody could deal with the finance, someone could deal with operational stuff, you could deal with food. Or you could, like me, like a fool, try and do all of it yourself, and you come out successful, or you just shut your place down. It is hard, yeah. and you need to put in the time, but you need to get in touch with the right people. Mm. There are a bunch of restaurant owners now who are perfectly okay with people coming in for internships. We're okay with it. I've gotten a bunch of people in uh, for internships. Um, There's a really good culinary school in Lahore also, mm. so there are avenues now. It's opening up now. Just don't be in a rush, mm. and spend at least a year, minimum one year of working in a restaurant kitchen, no matter what it is. But you, a lot of a lot of, uh, and I mean, and I say this not because men can't cook, but the the reality is that a lot of women are starting these home-based businesses yeah. because of timelines and schedules and kids and so on. So those that may not be able to go to culinary school, but they feel like they 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 have. Well, they they have a skill where they can make I don't know desi desserts, for example. You oh. know, mere mere hath ki gulab jamun saare tarif karte. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So now they want to get into that. So for them, they they're not going to go for an internship. Of course. For them, not. what would they? What would you advise them to do? Can we just then hai? stick to this? Okay, but the start an online chota sa. Start an online thing. Hmm. Stick to it. If timelines are an issue, if you know. Kids get in the way, and you know, husband, families, etc. All these things happen. Just continue working out of your home, and then see. Look, what's going to happen is that you need to put in that kind of time, mm. right? Uh, when I was working out of my house and I was doing fat sores, so I put in the kind of time, and it was really day in and day out, and I was just mm. doing it. I didn't mm. really want to open a restaurant, to be very honest. But three years into fat sores, I. He randomly made a menu for a friend's restaurant, so then I was suddenly creating menus for restaurants, and I was getting paid for it. So that became step two. Like it just naturally happened because I stuck to it. Uh, then after seven years, I was just like, okay, a home-based catering be kar liya and menu be bana liya. What do you want to do? Do you want to expand this into a bigger operation in terms of catering, or do you finally want to take the plunge and open a restaurant? And I don't know how it happened, but I thought, why not? Let's just open a restaurant. But by that point, I had had enough experience. Seven and a half, almost eight years is a long time to be doing yeah. something, yeah. and I felt like I was ready. And it just happened. So again, so if if someone was to ask me what I what kind of advice I would give to somebody who's working out of their homes. Mm. Firstly, put in the time. Give it at least two to three years of just working out of your home. Then get into a slightly pro professional kind of scenario. When you work in a restaurant for a year and do a full job, I'm not talking about a part-time job. I'm talking about dinner service, which is the real service, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll just know if this is for you or not. A lot <laughs> of people are just saying, "Nee kar sakte, bhai. Like this is too much. Ooh. We can't do it. We can't do it. It's back-breaking work." Yeah, it is. Uh, there's, there's a story I want to share, but I'm also just mindful of time. We're going to go to track. We're back with Maha Javed. Your questions, by the way, zero three one five triple one nine one nine one. It's uh, ten forty nine. Maha Javed joining us, uh, owner of Easy by Fatsos. So we're talking about setting up 
you know restaurants and a lot of people want to get into the, the the catering business and they've started up home businesses and a lot of people, you know I'm going to open up a restaurant here. Big, it's great to dream. I have I know some I won't, I won't name I won't name who they are. Husband wife team started a restaurant. Um, got in a very famous local chef consultant to design the menu. Um, <laughs> Mara's smiling <laughs> and and open up the restaurant. It wasn't Pakistani food. Um, and um, now the couple. Ma still is a chef. These guys were not chefs. They were just, you know, entrepreneurs. We want to start this. The stories they tell me about staff, the stories they tell me about people that were in the kitchen, the chefs, etc. It was like we couldn't do it. There'd be nights, busy nights, and the chef would not show up. Is it a maniara? And because, and so they literally had to get into the kitchen and because everything was sort of. You know, recipes were there, and they 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 were sort of instructions that they'd be cooking at the back. And how do you deal with that? I've been um, lucky, thankfully, because I make the menus myself. So I've never really, thankfully, thankfully, I've never really been in a position where any of my restaurant staff could blackmail me or you know take me for a ride because. uh i'm just like you know you're here based on your performance if you're not good i'm going to chuck you out and i'm going to go stand on the hotline and do it myself because i've created the menu so it's easier for me but i see a lot of people suffer at the hands of uh chefs and especially the ones who've been around for a while they've just been playing that kind of system wow. it's the same like 10 15 chefs that go around from restaurant to restaurant there are some really talented uh guys out there as well but you know it's like it's it's actually a bit of a vicious cycle that's been going on right now people have suddenly a lot of money in pakistan they're just like okay we're going to spend x amount of money uh, to open the restaurant we don't know anything about food but we think that if we steal someone's chef our restaurant's going to work right so what happens is that they're really destroying that kind of market and you know that salary like pay scale because they think that okay if you if you need to put someone you need to pay someone double of what they're getting yeah especially if it's a popular place and especially if it's like a successful you know naam wali jagah so you need to give them double at least of it's happened to my staff also you need to get them uh, give them double to break them right so then what this does is that even like a 20000 salary kind of guy would suddenly be offered 40 or 50,000 in my and in my opinion I don't think they deserve it mm. I don't think that they're skilled enough to be getting that kind of thing so I feel like the market is getting a bit ruined like this because a bunch of people have a lot of money and they're like we're going to put someone and we're going to pay this so now what happens is that somebody who doesn't have that kind of skill set knows that he could potentially be getting a lot more yeah So it's just turned into you know what I'm saying like it's become like this really weird kind of cycle where guys who aren't as good are demanding like crazy salaries because someone out there is willing to give it to them. Mm. I on the other hand don't have any of this because I've made the menu. If you're going to work and if you're going to be good, you're going to stay in my team and if not I'm just going to discard you because ultimately I need to do what's good for my business. Yeah. And I have made the menu so thankfully thankfully I've never really been blackmailed like that but it happens to a lot of people and it's unfortunate. There are also a lot of um uh, people that are switching careers in the corporate world and they're getting into the culinary world and they've gone and got some training so they 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 sort of take this seriously. Um a question that I was asked many years ago about acting I'm asking you that same question about th- this this industry. Um beta kya um पैसे कमा सकते हैं क्या मतलब लिविंग हो सकती है इससे या या इफ यू डू इट राइट इट्स सच अ प्रॉफिटेबल बिजनेस अ लॉट मोर देन एनी लाइक स्टार्टअप इवन लाइक देयर कैन बी अ लॉट ऑफ मनी इन फूड एंड फास्ट मनी यू जस्ट नीड टू do it right and you need to get the crowds in and you need to consistently sell good food and mm-hmm. have good operations have good service <coughs> but it is and i've been saying i've been saying this since 2009 but it is such a viable career option but you, there are many factors that go into it yeah. so you can't just look at a successful restaurant and be like okay x restaurant is doing so well let me get into it and i'll also do so well it doesn't really work like yeah. that it's quite it's a lot harder than that but if it does work with all the factors in uh 
you can make some serious cash. Because when you came here after studying, if things weren't sort of, you know, there wasn't much space. But now if anyone does study and come back, is there room for them? Yeah, can yeah, they get into places? Yeah, you can get a job now. Yeah. You can get a proper job and you can get a job in a good environment. Another, like one of the biggest reasons I didn't really want to work was because I was like, who am I going to work with? What is the situation going to be? Is, is it going to be safe for me? Yeah. And people still go through that. But yeah. I feel like there's a lot more women in the business now. Yeah, uh, and you know, and when women are there, you just automatically, I mean, you know, speaking highly of my no kind of gender, but, 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 but when women are in charge of something, I just feel like it's a safer environment. Yeah. For the most part, yeah. right? Yeah. So, like a young girl can come in and she can even do like a night shift and if she's working for me, I'll make sure that she gets home safely. Mm. You know, I would put in that kind of... And I know that other women would do this too. Yeah. Uh, it's sad that women are still not coming out as much as I think they should, but I feel like times are changing and it will get better. So, uh, before we end it, your take-home advice for women who want to get into the catering business, want to get into the food business, your... What is your... Aside from patience, because you, I think you're great at that, but aside from patience, what, what is your take-home advice? Anyways? You just need to work really <laughs> hard and you cannot get tired. You can't. And you also can't get bogged down by what someone has said. It's a very crass, oh God, like, yeah. you know, crude. There's a lot of batamizi involved. So you can't be very sensitive to these things. I'm not saying that you should be okay with someone disrespecting you. But is it is that kind of really intense, hot-headed... I mean, you're working in a kitchen. Yeah. Okay, there's a hot oven. There's, like, a hot line. There's knives. There's pans. There's, it, it is a re recipe for a disaster. Things can go intense. But you just need to be strong. You can't be soft to be in this business. That is what I feel. I feel. I'm sure you get asked this a lot because you're a chef, but uh, your favorite comfort food? My favorite comfort food is biryani, no questions <laughs> asked. I was not expecting that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Biryani, nothing else. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big desi food lover. Dessert? Dessert, I'm not really, like, I'm not a very big dessert lover, but I don't know. Like, I'll eat something. But really, dessert is not a thing for me. Dood patti or coffee? Coffee. I would rather die than drink <laughs> dude patti. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, coffee. Um, well, thanks very much, Maha. A pleasure speaking being to you. I've learned a lot from you today. Thank you so much. Um, Easy by Fat Souls. They're on uh, Instagram. Oh, yeah, this is Instagram. When you were here, there was no Instagram. There was, <laughs> there was no Instagram. There was there was social Instagram. media. Yeah. Keep up with that game. Yeah. And we're also looking forward to opening Easy 2. Yes, t tell us where that's going to be. Can you tell? Can you reveal where that's going to yes, be? Yes, yes, we can because it's almost ready now. I think we need about three <coughs> weeks or something. We are on Main Chara Faisal. You guys will see us very soon. And uh, I would love for everyone to come and check it out because it's a much bigger Easy. So I was going to say. Cause, so anyone that's been Easy by Fat Souls uh, on Shabazz, that, that, that era of DHA, um, it's, it's a small little outline. It's great. You know, I, I take my kids there, as I said. But this one, I thought it was going to be the same. But she's, no, it's like, what, 10 times bigger? It's 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 a 70 seater restaurant. So hopefully there won't be any lines like we'd have it easy, like easy one. So three to four weeks and we're ready to go. Ah, no, no, no sleep. No sleep. No sleep. None. Thanks very much, Ma. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Maha Javed from Easy by Fat Souls. Easy 2, by the way, opening up on Shara Fest in about three weeks. Yes, three, three weeks. four weeks. Yeah. I'll see you there. This is Halsey without me. Thanks very much for joining me. We'll be uh, back here again tomorrow. It's Thursdays, which means it's Throwback Jams, music from the 90s. Uh, that is our playlist for tomorrow. Take good care of yourselves. Halsey without me. May your news be good news.